Malacca may be most famous for Haranaka culture and its food. You can really smell it. It's very nice and fluffy. They're just very unique and it's hard to compare to. I love eating Nyonya food. It makes me feel like I'm just eating at someone else's house. When the Chinese came in the 15th to 17th centuries, they mixed with the local Malays and the Peranakan culture was born. That fusion of Chinese and Malay has created an incredible cuisine called Peranakan cuisine. These bread right here. Chicken, like gravy, rice, all together. Mm. Oh my God. And we're really excited to show this cuisine to you. If you've been to Malacca and you haven't experienced Peranakan culture and cuisine, have you really been to Malacca? So we're here at Unicorn Cafe. Look at these bread right here. Unicorn Cafe is a family-owned business that's been here in Malacca for the last six years. I love eating dishes like this because it looks, it's very, it feels like home. It looks like you're eating in someone else's house. Malacca has got so many different Peranakan, Nyonya restaurants. It's very hard to choose. Even like, it took a few tries of trying a few different places. It's a good place here to eat, but I first came here to Unicorn Cafe and I was blown away just I love the feel of it. Like Jumi said, it feels like eating at home. I mean, look at this. It's like, it's like we're eating their home. There's like bowls of the food here. We have our rice, we have our egg and everything here. So I'm gonna try something first that I've never even tried before. It's the Kualada Ikan. So this has the Ikan Pari, the stingray. And the gravy is a nice, interesting, like dark brown slash green color. So there's eggplant in here. It's made with turmeric and peppercorn gravy. I'm really excited to taste it. Put it here with some rice. You gotta have it with the rice. Campari all together. Rice. Mmm. Kind of spice to it too. Really strong turmeric flavor. And the campari itself is very clean. Very fresh. And there's always a time with like campari. There's always a risk. Sometimes they may have that ammonia taste. Definitely not here. Mm. Up next we have the satay jantan. It looks really interesting. So. You know, when you think satay, you think of the grilled meats with the peanut sauce on top. The funny thing when you look at this, the gravy does look kind of like a satay sauce, but it doesn't smell like a satay sauce. Like, I smell that, the first smell I get is lime leaves. Really strong aroma of lime leaves. And this is actually more like a stew. So it's uh, pieces of chicken that are in this really thick stew kind of gravy. Chicken, like gravy, rice, all together. Mmm. Oh my God. My nose didn't fail me there. <laughs> you gotta trust your nose sometimes on these dishes because wow, that lime leaf flavor is so powerful, strong. I love the consistency of this, it's thick. It's got a nice kick to it too, it's spicy. Not overwhelmingly spicy, but it's got a really nice kick. Next dish here is arguably the most important Peranakan dish, at least from what we hear. So Ponte, you can have it with either ayam chicken or babi, the pork. We got it with the babi. Not always able to be found here in Malacca. You know, some restaurants, they don't serve it with pork. So this one is pork here. We have potato and we have these nice shiitake mushrooms. And this one really looks like a home cook style. I love this dish. Uh, it's made with fermented bean paste and it has the gula malacca in here. So I'm gonna take some of this. This is another one, perfect with rice. Take some of the pork, take some of the shiitake mushroom, and some extra gravy. Can't go, can't go cheap on the gravy. Mmm. That's such a comforting dish. It tells more of those like soulful, cooked slow. Everything just kind of combines together. It's definitely one of those dishes I feel that like when it just sits there, it absorbs all those flavors especially from that mushroom. I haven't even eaten the mushroom yet and I can taste some of that mushroom flavor. If you know shiitake mushroom, that flavor is very distinct. Mm. It's got a nice bit of that sweetness from the gula malaka. I really like this dish. Pongte is a must try. Even if you don't eat pork, get it with chicken if you can. It's delicious.
way to end a Nyonya meal is with Nyonya chendol. Style is so different because what I've noticed is that they have the chendol noodles and the red beans first usually. Then they put the shave ice on top, coconut milk, and they really give it a generous dousing of the gula malaka. Because we're in Malacca, gotta have the gula malaka. It's here. Mm. It's so coconutty. And I love the chendol noodles here. They have such a strong pandan flavor. Maybe the strongest pandan flavor of any chendol noodle we've had even here in Malaysia at all. Red beans cooked to a really nice texture. And it was mixed up, it's so nice. It's perfect, especially after all those intense flavors we had in the meal. It's such a well-balanced chendol, sweet, coconutty, pandan flavor, the red bean, everything mixed so well. So we're here at Nya Bongsu. I just love eating Nyonya food, especially because it feels like home cooked and especially this one where we are eating at an ancestral house. It's actually a restaurant in an ancestral house. feels like very homey. You get in here and you're just like, here, welcome. This long table, the dining table, and there's actually two tables. <laughs> About to have um, these Nyonya dishes. It looks very, very good. This is actually not our first rodeo of Nyonya food, but this one looks a uh, little different than what we had before. We're, you have a real Nyonya feast here. I just love this place. It was recommended to our, by our friend Kelvin here. And it's a relatively new place, uh, at least restaurant-wise, but the house itself is definitely not. I really feel like we've gone back in time here. It's a wonderful spot. Like, I feel like we've transported hundreds of years back to uh, old Malacca here, and we got a nice spread of dishes. We got a real spread. We're not gonna cover every single dish, but we're gonna give you a little taste of that. Got this beautiful fish head of San Pedas with balimbing in it. We first I'm trying it. We got chancharu fish stuffed, otak otak. We got kangkong, balachan, oh man. We're gonna focus here on the chicholak omelet. This one's very fluffy, and the chincholuk is the fermented krill, the small shrimps. You can really smell it. It's very nice and fluffy. It's got onions in here too. Let's take a bite. Mmm. You can definitely taste that fermented, briny, funky flavor. I like it mixed with the omelet. The omelet's creamy, and you have that kind of briny, funky taste to counter it. Mm. This wakalawak, it looks so good. This chicken. Chicken is very tender when you cut it like this. Look at that. So soft. It's really stark black color. So the Buakalawak is a special fruit. It's from a mangrove tree, it's a kapayang tree. And the Buakalawak is very, it takes, it's very time consuming to prepare it. And it can be poisonous. Apparently there's cyanide in here if it's not uh, prepared properly. This one, it's a delicacy. It's a classic Nyonya dish. I'm curious to try. I'm actually gonna go with that first. Try a little bit first before I mix it. Dark fruit. Interesting smell. Ooh. We've had this a few times here in Malacca, but this one is a very interesting flavor. It's a little earthy, but it's also got some sort of, it's hard to really identify. Like this is one of those foods that are just very unique. It's hard to compare to. I think it tastes a little clove in here. Not just from the dish, but the earthiness, it's delicious. Of all the wakalok we tried here, it's third time, by far my favorite. Mm, it's really good, like the chicken. I gotta go about it this way, we gotta get this gravy, pour on the chicken, on the rice. Just give it a nice dousing. A little of that fruit. Big bite. Mmm. It's very unique. Like this dish, it's not like any overpoweringly like salty or sour, but it's got a little bit of everything. That buakalawak is really the star of this dish. It's such a cool, even when you tap it, when you go like this, it has a hollow kind of sound to it. Delicious. Definitely one of the most unique dishes we had here in Malacca, must try. The 
this next up. Looks like a turu turu place. Uh, a turu turu for me, it's a Filipino buffet that they laid out the dishes for you. You pick the dishes or any meats or food that you want. But in this case, it's laid out for us and we pick our own food and we plate it ourselves. Can't get enough of nyonya food here. I love just, I love eating nyonya food. It makes me feel like I'm just eating at someone else's house. The spot is called Cafe Lin, so it's, it's an awesome concept. There's so many nyonya, peranakan restaurants you can have here in Malacca. It's the only one that we've seen that does the steam table, kind of economy rice style. So, you know, economy rice is very popular here in Malaysia. And there's all these different dishes laid out. I mean, we are here later and may not have the full selection. And we also asked the guy behind the counter, he said, oh, they do rotate some of the dishes each day. So it's not a guarantee you're gonna get the same exact dishes. So we said two of them are staples each day. One of them is this beautiful looking orange yellow curry. This is the lamak nenas. Lamak is fat, so it's from the coconut milk. And nenas is the pineapple. There's tons of that in here and it's with fish. This tastes a lot like a laksa. So it has that coconut milk, spicy, it has that lemongrass, I think some lime leaf in here too, but what makes it different is that pineapple. Even when you don't eat the pineapple itself, the gravy has that pineapple flavor. I think it's just been stewing in there, it's been sitting in there for hours. That's also what I love about these kind of places that the flavors just are fully absorbed because it's sitting there for hours. You're getting, the food is made one way, and it's those flavors stick there and they just absorb their fullest potential, you get them. Try this uh, chicken with lime leaves. And you can actually see the full lime leaves here. I'm like, it's one of my favorite herbs, aromatics around. It's in this nice thick paste. I'll take that with some rice. Here we go. Mm. Wow, hey, a huge chunk of ginger here too. Full of flavor, those lime leaves really jump out. It's that thick kind of paste. I love it. I can just, I can eat a ton of this for sure. Of course, I have to try the pong Can't get enough pong when we're here. It doesn't matter how many times we eat it, we always have to order it. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's a nice slight sweetness to it. It's a good dish too. Nice thing about coming here too, you can even just get your vegetables. We always like to balance it out with veggies. Even if you don't see us eating veggies on camera, oftentimes we are in the background. We're here at Baba Charlie bright and early in the morning. Let's go and dig in with this quay. Oh yeah, I'm ready. This quay is so colorful. We love seeing it. So we've we've had quay many times over the years, but we've never got to see the process of it being made and cut into strips. It's, it's pretty incredible. You have one big pan. You see it being steamed in the big steamers. It's taken out, it's cooled off by the fan, and then it's cut up into big slices. They're plopped down on the table. They look like big snakes, big colorful snakes. And they're chopped up into pieces. Everything here, handmade, really it's special. It's, it's a amazing. labor of love. It's amazing. So when it comes to quake, read about it, that's a dying art. You know, it's not, not many people know how to do it. I don't know where to start first, but uh, first let's introduce you to what we're about to have. Quay Lapis. Quay Lapis. It's the beautiful layers here. This one's very sticky. Yeah. It's really cool to watch this being made layer by layer. So you got to see it get steamed, then another layer is poured on top and steamed again. The first time we had this was in New York City. We I'm not sure if they're still they still exist, but um, it's Let's Makan in Chinatown. And when we filmed it, we were told to, you can actually peel it piece by piece and how you eat it. We didn't know that right away. We didn't know that. Now, we now we know. We we ate it in one bite. Dewy <laughs> <laughs> mm. texture. It's very sticky when you eat it like this and you can feel it on your fingers. It's got that nice uh, rose flavor. Mm. So good. Very delicate pink color. It's very pretty and has almost like a pretty taste to it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Next. I think next, try the Srimukha Pandan. This one has the green layer, 
custard on top, the pandan. Then it has the glutinous rice on the bottom with the blue, it's from the butterfly pea flower, natural coloring. All right, let's do this. Yeah. Yikes. There we go. It's not bad. Mmm. All about the sticky rice has a salty taste to it too. It's got the, the santa and the coconut milk. It has that salty taste and that texture. It's a difference of texture. You have that creamy, softer layer on top, and you have that bouncy, sticky, glutinous rice on the bottom. We've had this before. Yeah, the quick talam, a purple color on top, white layer, and a brown layer. This one's really sticky. We saw how this was cut and it's very delicate and hard to cut these. It looks mm -hmm. very hard to do it. And um, yeah, this layer is very dense on the bottom. Mm. It's gonna taste a bit eggy and it tastes like gula malaka. It's got a nice smoky taste to it too. What I like about all these kueh, they're not too sweet. That's the lovely thing about kueh, they're, they're not very sweet have just the right amount of sweetness level. And sometimes you have a little saltiness in there too. Really nice. Sweet and salty is like perfect combination. So good. Next, this one. Ago. Don't think we've had this before ever. This is the most intriguing looking one. Look at this. It's almost, almost looks like fuzzy in a way. Cause it's like, it's made with the uh, sago. So it's, you see it before it's cooked. It's like, it's just balls. like. Like, almost like tapioca. Three different color layers. You have that blue butterfly pea flower, the white, and then the brown. brown gula malaka. And you have the shredded coconut in here all throughout. Mm. Mm. I like that texture. I'm so used to having the other kueh that has either the glutinous rice or the custard. First time having it with the sago. This one you really taste the coconut and you feel the texture of that grated coconut in there. It's crunchy. When you when you bite it, you can really feel it. Again, another one, savory and sweet. All right, this is the kue talam, but this one is kuning on the top, so it's yellow. Mm -hmm. All that sweet custard on top. Such a nice textural contrast with that bottom, that sticky rice in the bottom. And the sticky rice also is a little salty too. Savory, sweet. If you love savory, sweet, it's kind of quays for you. <laughs> <laughs> Star of the show. Ooh, that aroma. We watched this one being made fresh. We saw the batter. Has actual pieces of durian in here too. There's real durian in this. So it's the pampalik durian. You see it being made fresh. It's put onto the, these little molds, cooked for about 10 minutes or so. And then when it's taken out, it's folded. So you have that nice brown bottom right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love durian and man, anything with durian wins my heart. This definitely wins my heart. You can really taste that durian. Mm. Pancake, very, it's like a very fluffy pancake and with durian with durian another thing that we have here is this these beautifully wrapped in banana leaf kochi i love that aroma that banana leaf so these we watch these being made fresh too from the batter that's rolled up by hands that's why everything here is handmade really special like you really appreciate when you watch the craft it being made by hand. That makes it extra special. This one is the Kwekochi Itam. This one is made with the black rice. They have to blend this, okay, and then put it all together, which makes it the Kwekochi. It's sticky on the outside, but not as sticky as some of the other kwe we had before. Like a mochi. Yeah, it does look like a mochi, exactly. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's hidden inside. It's this beautiful mixture of grated coconut and gula malaka, the palm sugar. Mm. Anything that has that filling inside is gonna be delicious. Okay, also a thing with it is the contrast and textures. You have that soft, sticky outside and you have that crunchy interior.
the king of Quay here in Malacca, <laughs> Hello. Baba Charlie. So we're here with Baba Charlie at Baba Charlie Cafe. It's right up the road. A few steps away is their cafe. So guys, Baba Charlie, this way. Here in the cafe, they serve full also menu. full menu. And this, what we're gonna have is this Nyonya laksa and um, Auntie was just telling us that this laksa paste she made it just this morning before we got in there. This Nyonya laksa looks so good. It's very beautifully put together. So Nyonya laksa is really special in that the paste is really what makes it Nyonya laksa. Like that paste is it's a lot of ingredients that go into it. I had a few different Nyonya laksa. First time trying this one from Baba Charlie. I'm really excited. This bowl is decked out. You have a couple head on prawns here. You have the piram, the cockles that we love. And they're, they have that nice red color too. They're perfect looking. And you have fried tofu skin. You have tofu puff, fish balls, half boiled egg, sambal. This thing looks insane. And we have two types of noodles. We have the yellow meat and we have the bihun. really nice. You really taste that lemongrass and that paste. I like because it's a good mix of the paste and the coconut milk. Uh huh. Some laksa can be a little too heavy on the coconut milk or a little too heavy on the paste. This is right in the middle actually. I think the balance is what you want in a laksa. You do want that yeah. kind of creamy texture to go with it too. This is, oh, all right. I think I'm gonna have to go. I just had a little sip of the broth. I wanna mix it in a little bit with the sambal. Get these noodles together. And that's what's nice about having two types of noodles, that they really absorb the broth well. Mm. And we have this beautiful cockle right here that's been submerged in this broth. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm obsessed with cockles in any form. I love when they're in laksa. It really just gives it that like oceany, briny, seafood taste to it. The beauty of Lazy Susan. All right, time for our next round of quay. First time I've seen a quay that has chili sauce on the side. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting texture. It's kind of soft, but inside you can sit an extra layer of chewiness. I think that's the yam, chunky parts of the yam in here. At the top, the shrimp you taste a little bit, but you taste, you taste more, I think it's onion actually. Fried Ooh, onion. Fried, yeah, fried onion. I'm gonna try it with the chili sauce. It feels weird having quail with chili sauce, but for this one, it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. I like it with this chili sauce. Chili sauce almost tastes like a sriracha in a way, but a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to go with this quick. 